Hey everyone, this is Nick and today we're going to take a look at email clients for Linux. And we have a ton of choice here. And I know a lot of people prefer to see their mail in a webmail. But if you prefer to have a native app that integrates correctly with your desktop, if you prefer to have something that really works offline or just that extra little bit of functionality, nothing beats a local client. And fortunately, you have a lot of choices on Linux from the simplest experience to the most powerful one. Powerful like today's sponsor, which lets you monitor and secure your internet connection. This video is sponsored by Safing. They make the Portmaster, which is an amazing tool that lets you control and monitor your internet connection with a simple graphical user interface. You get block lists, you get profiles depending on your current connection, and you can even tweak settings per app. It's also completely open source and free. Safing also makes the SPN or Safing Privacy Network. It's a powerful VPN alternative which spreads your connections across the globe instead of rerouting all your connections to only one server. With the SPN, you can be everywhere at once and no website can build a profile from your visits and your location. Of course, you also get all the benefits from a traditional VPN. If that's something you'd like to try, and if you want to help support Safing's open source work, you can subscribe to the SPN right now, or download the Portmaster by heading in the link in the description below. Okay, let's begin with the main one here, which is Thunderbird. Thunderbird is a cross-platform email client that was initially developed by Mozilla using the same technologies as Firefox. Since then, it was almost abandoned for a brief period but the community rallied around it and it's now being actively improved again, with the new version 102 being planned for June, with a beta at the end of this month. Thunderbird does a lot. It has a nice wizard to guide you to add your own email account, and once that's done, you get access to the email. Obviously, duh. But you also get a calendar and tasks list and a complete address book. The interface doesn't quite look like a GTK or Qt application, but it does pick up on your dark theme correctly. The user interface isn't my favorite. It looks a bit dated in my opinion, but the Thunderbird team is working hard to refine it in the next releases with a big update planned for the version that will come after version 102. Thunderbird also has plenty of configuration options to let you tweak how it looks and works, to manage tags, offline news, spell checking, and how your email actually displays. It also has plenty of hidden features, like a complete RSS feed reader that you can access by adding a new feed account in the settings. And you can even use it as a chat client for Google Talk, IRC, or any app using the XMPP protocol. And if you're an Emacs fan and you like your apps to be operating systems, basically, you also have access to a ton of plugins. You can add, for example, sticky notes or integrate Thunderbird with Nextcloud to upload your large attachments to your storage and send them via a link in the email. You can add a conversation view. You can turn your favorite folders into tabs in the interface. You can add Google Calendar support or even Exchange support. There's basically anything you want to either add features, remove them, or change how Thunderbird works. It's extremely powerful. Thunderbird is available on most, if not all, Linux distros, either through the default repositories or Flathub, Snap, the AUR, wherever, it's everywhere. I personally find it too feature-packed for my needs and its interface just doesn't look native enough to my tastes. But I'm eagerly waiting to see what the team has in store for version 102 and the next one, and maybe I'll give it another shot after that. And also, my good friends Jason from Linux for Everyone and Alessandro Castellani from the YouTube channel uh, Alicad, they both work on Thunderbird, which is pretty awesome. Now, if you're looking for something that will look right at home on your GNOME desktop with a simple and easy experience, Geary is what you want. It uses a three-pane layout with an inbox and folder list on the left, a message list in the middle, and a conversation view and emails on the right. It's very, very simple without any options to change how it works. You can just let it run in the background to check for new mail and enable a few plugins like email templates, mail merge, and playing a sound when an email is sent. It's also responsive, which means the interface will adapt to any window or screen size, which is useful if you plan to use it on a Linux phone. 
Although I'm not quite sure how many of you actually daily drive a Pinephone or equivalent. Geary supports any email provider with special integrations for Gmail, Outlook and Yahoo. It supports message search in all folders and inside a conversation. It supports archiving, labels and starring conversations to find them easily. Now it's definitely on the simpler side as it doesn't let you create folders or labels and if you're not into how it works out of the box, you also won't be able to change that. It just does email in pure one app, one purpose GNOME fashion. So you will also have to use a separate app for your calendar, for your tasks, for your contacts and all the stuff like that. This is the one I personally use because my email needs are extremely simple and it integrates really well with GNOME. So yeah, it's my default client when I use GNOME. Now, if you're more of a KDE Plasma user, you'll probably want to head towards Kmail, which is designed to look right at home on that desktop environment. Kmail also has a nice wizard to get you started, although it didn't automatically detect my email provider's incoming and outgoing parameters, so I had to enter them manually. The default interface looks like what you would expect from a KDE app, with a menu bar, toolbar and a few panels. The good thing is, as with most KDE apps, you can configure it exactly how you want. You can put the message list on the right or the bottom, remove the folders list, the menu bar and generally add anything you want in the toolbar. So you can virtually replicate any other email client's interface inside of Kmail. KDE is generally very good for that, isn't it, my macOS replicating friends? Kmail can work with Exchange accounts. It supports OpenPGP with a nice key generation wizard so your email can be encrypted. You can integrate Spam Assassin or Bogo filter to remove spam if your email provider isn't really up to the task and it can work offline entirely. Now, if you want a more complete suite for handling all your productivity needs, Kmail can also integrate with Contact, which brings in an address book, a calendar, a to-do list, RSS feeds, a journaling solution and some sticky notes. Basically everything you could add to Thunderbird, but with the KDE look and feel. Contact basically grabs individual programs for KDE and integrates them in a single shell, so you can switch from one to the other easily. It's a very cool solution. Kmail is the client I used back when I used KDE on all of my devices. It's great, it's super customizable, although it did need a little bit of work at the start to work, look and feel like an email app I could actually use. It was a little bit too complex for me, just out of the box. On to the granddaddy of Linux email clients, the Outlook wannabe, Evolution. And while it doesn't get many updates these days and it looks more at home on a GNOME 2 desktop than on a GNOME 3 one, it's still a super useful email application. Its first run wizard is super comprehensive. It lets you restore from a backup, it auto detects the account app you're using, whether it's a basic IMAP account or Gmail, Outlook and a lot of others. Evolution will pick up on your dark theme and GTK theme and you get access to your email, contacts, calendars, tasks and notes. You can change how things look with the message panel on the right or the bottom, although with virtually every computer now having a white screen, I don't really see why you would want the message list in the bottom at all. And you can also change how the little icon switcher on the bottom left works, as well as display a to-do list on the right. It even integrates with the GNOME online accounts, so it will pull your contacts, tasks and calendars automatically, which is pretty handy to avoid configuring it again, something that you will have to do manually with Thunderbird, for example. You also get a ton of preferences to change how you write your email, how you manage your labels, how the calendar and tasks work, if you want to load external content in HTML emails, it's very complete on that front. It also has an advanced search tool that lets you add conditions to filter your email how you want it. Evolution might not really conform to today's GNOME human interface guidelines, but if you want to use a GTK app and Geary is too simple for you, Evolution is definitely a fantastic solution. I used it for a long while at work because I was swamped with email and to-do lists and I just needed to have a complete overview of everything, which Evolution managed pretty well. On to Mailspring. It might not look like your other Linux applications, but it's a pretty nice email client that you can get from FlatHub. It will ask you to create an account at startup to get access to snoozing emails and read receipts, but you can skip it if you don't want to use these features. 
It can use most email providers like Gmail, iCloud, GMX, Office 365 or Outlook. And of course, independent IMAP accounts, although it will ask you to enter these accounts details manually. It comes with multiple themes out of the box, including one that looks like Yaru, Ubuntu's theme. And it has a dark theme as well, although it won't use your desktop's exact theme. Mailspring kinda just looks like an older Mac app out of the box. It's especially visible in its preferences. But if that doesn't deter you, it's pretty nice. It's got a comprehensive set of keyboard shortcuts, including presets that mimic Outlook, Apple Mail or Gmail. And you can set rules for incoming email. You can create HTML signatures as well as configure a lot of things to let the app work how you want it to. Mailspring is open source and free to use, but there's a pro subscription available for more advanced stuff, like snoozing messages, read receipts, mail templates, send emails at a planned date and time, and reminders to tell you when you've not replied to an email. Mailspring is a competent solution if you don't really care if your apps look like one another. Personally, I'm a consistency nerd and apps that look out of place just Irk me, I'm super weird about that, so it's not for me. To complete this list, we have Bluemail, which isn't open source, so if that's something that bothers you, you might want to skip to the end of the video. But still, it has a Linux version, and it has an interesting approach, which is treating your inbox as a to-do list. It works with any email account, including Gmail, Yahoo, Outlook, or iCloud, and of course, your basic IMAP accounts. Once you're in, you get the traditional three-pane layout with a conversation view and a few buttons in the bottom left. These let you access the interesting features of Bluemail, like the Later board. This thing is a small Kanban board to let you organize your emails as if they were tasks. You just drag them to a column, like Today, Later or Done, and you've got yourself a little organizer to avoid using another app to convert your actionable emails into tasks. You can create other columns if you like to sort your work exactly how you like. The email list can also be sorted to hide emails that aren't from normal existing people like marketing email, newsletters and the like. And you've got a ton of preferences, including a dark mode. I know you're gonna ask, dark mode fans are loud. You also can create signatures, sync your account between devices so you can get your later board on mobile devices or other computers. And this doesn't require an account, just a sync code. You can also use the calendar your email provider gives you, but you can't add an external calendar if your email account doesn't come with one. I personally do not want to use my email list as a to-do list as I try but completely fail to adhere to the inbox zero principle. But if you're not put off by proprietary software and your email is your to-do list, then Bluemail is definitely going to do the trick. And of course, I know someone will mention Tutanota in the comments, but it is not listed here as it only works if you're using a Tutanota mail client, so you can't use it with your existing email. Still, their desktop app, while not integrated with our Linux desktops, is pretty handy. And there's an email client for everyone on Linux, whether you want something that is packed with features like Thunderbird or Evolution, something super simple like Geary, or very customizable like Kmail, there's an option for you. A webmail can definitely do the trick for a lot of people, but if you don't like web apps or if you get lost in browser tabs, then a local email client with desktop notifications, potential system tray icon, and a look that's more native to your desktop, that just can be beat. I used a bunch of them at some point or another, Kmail, Geary, Thunderbird, Evolution, Nowadays, I use Geary because I'm on GNOME and my email needs are very simple, but if they ever get complicated again, I'll probably move to Evolution or maybe Thunderbird if the team can seduce me with their new features. And if you live in a terminal, there's also Mutt, the command line email client. Although at that point, if you're using that, your web browser is probably Lynx and well, I'm sorry. What I'm not sorry about is today's sponsor, Tuxedo. Tuxedo is based in Germany, but they ship worldwide and they make laptops and desktops that ship with Linux out of the box. You can of course install any distro you want, but you can also pick one directly from them. They let you engrave your own logo on the back of their laptops. They have tons of options to customize every device to perfection to something that suits your needs and their range is just huge from the biggest gaming desktops to the highest powered gaming or productivity laptops with everything in the middle, small Nux, Ultrabooks, anything, you name it. 
They recently refreshed their Stellaris 15, which is their high-end gaming workstation, gaming laptop, and now it has 12th gen Intel CPUs, it has the most powerful Nvidia RTX GPUs you can find, and it's in a relatively small and light package with the best optomechanical keyboard I've ever used. It's the best laptop keyboard I've used, period. It also has a fantastic 3K panel and tons of I.O. I reviewed the previous iteration on the channel and I should receive the new one very, very soon, which I will probably end up buying for my editing needs on the go. So if you need a new device running Linux out of the box, check out Tuxedo in the link in the description below. Their devices are amazing and I'm sure you'll find something that you will like. Now, thanks everyone for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't hesitate to like, to subscribe, to turn on notifications or to throw a comment at your screen. And if you didn't like it, you can also dislike and tell me why in the comments as well. And if you feel like you're really way too rich and you want to help me make more of these videos, you've got the super thanks button in the bottom, or you can use one of the links in the description below for PayPal, Patreon, or YouTube members. The last two, Patreons and YouTube members, get access to a weekly Patreon cast and the right to vote on the next topics I'll cover. So thanks everyone for watching, and I guess you'll see me in the next one. Bye.